G'day guys, uh, welcome back of course to the Time Bomb channel. I hope all is good in your part of the world. Today I wanted to do a sort of a follow-up review on the uh, the Seiko Willard over here. It's been a, uh, a few months uh, since I bought the watch. Um, I've worn it almost daily. I really wanted to um, get my head around the watch and then sort of get my best thoughts gathered as feedback for the uh, for the watch. Um, it was a bit of a grail watch uh, for me. Um, the sad reality of life, though, is that you know financial financial reasons I am going to need to sell it. So if you're interested, keep an eye out on my YouTube on my um, eBay channel. It will be going up there soon. Um, I need money to be able to buy watches to review on, on the channel. This isn't a sponsored channel in any way, shape or form. So yeah, it's all, all self-funded. So yeah, the money that I'll make from this one will go back into buying a, a couple of other watches. Um, but yeah, certainly as a watch that I, I absolutely, is that the correct word to say, lusted after a very, very long time. Um, it's, it's um, I mean, yeah, there's so much about it that I love and there's so much about it that I would change. So here goes with a you know with some 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 overall thoughts then. As a travel watch, I think this is one of the places where this watch has excelled for me. I've worn it um, on multiple overseas trips, long haul flights, etc. Um, I haven't babied it in any way, shape, or form, and there are hardly any marks on it whatsoever. No dings or anything like that. Um, it has held up superbly well. So the coating on this steel works brilliantly. In addition to that, the uh, 70 hour power reserve I found to be incredibly useful on long haul trips. Um, it just makes so much sense. Um, you arrive jet lagged, you haven't got a clue what time it is, but your watch is correct and you know, life just makes sense as, 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 as a consequence. No, it's not a GMT, uh, but Seiko, if you're listening, I think there's a clear market opportunity for you there to make a GMT version of these uh, because, yeah, for traveling, it just makes, again, perfect sense. In addition to which, I think, you know, on long trips, um, something for me that I've always, I like about the watch is that it is a total eye magnet. It doesn't matter from where I look at the watch. I absolutely love it. Um, Something strange to relate to you here. When I, I, I used to ride an old, um, I rode several uh, um, street triples, uh, Triumphs. And one of the best parts of that motorbike to me was not just the performance of the bike, but the exhaust note. Baffles out, I used to get a semi just riding that bike along, just listening to that exhaust note. And I think that the Willard, yes, I know I'm strange. Sorry, guys. The Willard is a little bit the same to me. It just It's just something that is so easy on the eyes. Um... On wrist, um, I'm gonna say that I think it could be a, uh, a little bit bigger. Um, I think it, the, due to the uh, that cushion case, it would allow for the watch to be a fraction larger. I think that the uh, original spec size of the original Willard um, are, are the ones to go for. Um, however, having said that, being that it is the size that it is, it fits very, very well under cuffs cuffs so meaning so you can office it up or uh, dress it down as a result talking about the uh, things on the watch itself then uh, the crown to me is too small it's too fiddly and because it's so well guarded between those crown guards I find it just a little bit f fussy trying to uh, um, yeah, with my sausage fingers to, to operate. It works, it's doable, but I mean, if it was a fraction bigger, I think it would be better. Finding a good strap for the watch has been an issue for me. Um, the waffle that I used on it, it looks damn good, uh, but it's damned uncomfortable. And that's all down to the position of the holy holies um, in there on the uh, lugs. Um, it, it just it just means that any strap that you put on it sits you know vertical down onto your wrists and therefore as a consequence pushes into your wrists and doesn't work um, it really does need a pre-curved strap um, I know that this is the wrong color but I think if you've got a pre-curve on that it's brilliant and I haven't found somebody for example like uh, Uncle Seiko that's, that does a pre-curve that fits this one again if I'm wrong please do uh, correct me the issue, I think, with the um, the bracelet um, on this one for me is that is the 
is the angle of the um, the male end link here. It's essentially, you know, been struck by gravity and head heads down far too quickly. And again, that's possibly because of the shorter stubby lugs there. If that male end link, you know, protruded just was a little higher, you know, just a mill millimeter or two higher, it would just allow the strap then to sit further off the uh, case body. And I think then would make it fit even more comfortable and would make you know, this strap better. Remember when I did the opening uh, review of this one, um, I found this one incredibly jangly and squeaky. Um, overuse within time now it has loosened up a little bit um, and it no longer squeaks as much as it did do on the opening so yeah that's uh, the oil perhaps has just moved around a little bit or have I, I've added a little bit of sweat to it and it now works much better um, the, the weight of the head as well even as I'm holding it here in hand is absolutely delicious again I think it's just one of the uh, contributing factors to the success of the watch it feels brilliant in hand and on wrist as a consequence the movement yes that lovely 6R35 is very very hit and miss um, I've used it in rotation so I've not been fixating on its accuracy um, it's not the cleanest movement in the world many others have many other comments on the watch on, the, on that movement sorry um, so I'm going to leave it up to them I've not had too much of an issue with it on accuracy wise as I say using, using it a lot and that power reserve to me has, has just meant that it's just kept on ticking and you know if you need to adjust it then you can adjust it I'm, I'm not overly uh, obsessive about something like that but I do know that many people uh, it irks many people uh, the dial um, it is black but it is not the deepest black the uh, aluminium matte uh, bezel there um, is, is a deeper darker black and as a consequence what happens is the um, the dial itself almost appears like quite a, a, a lighter what have we got 50 shades of black um, it's a little bit it's 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 a bit grayish in some lights and I think that adds to the overall legibility of the watch because it just adds another dimension to it and it also then adds perhaps a little bit more vintage uh, to the dial as well and I know that one of the other versions that they did did have a grayer dial so I think it's clearly something that Seiko have spotted as well not just me sorry that dial is so that crystals quite fingerprinted up sorry I've been using it on, on trips and I've not given it a proper clean um so yeah I mean all in all it's it's a bit of a mixed review as I said at the beginning, there are aspects of the watch that I just desperately love about it. I think the heritage, the um, the history behind the design, and all of those things just have me tingling and giggling with uh, with glee. And there are other aspects of the lack of design consideration which kind of leave me a little bit frustrated. Yeah, I get it. Perfect doesn't exist and compromise is one of those pillars of life. But again, as a, as a watch obsessive, as a watch nutter, to me, I would counter those two arguments and saying that if and when you're designing a watch, you do X, Y and Z, you know, you're going to have an even better, better, better watch. All right, guys, over to you. What do you reckon? Have you had one of these uh, for a good while? And what are your takeaways with ownership of it after, you know, a year, a couple of months, etc.? Uh, how do you feel about it? Look forward to reading your comments down below. Thanks as always for your time and your view. And we'll catch you all in the next watch bit. Cheers, guys.